This is the second video of the Veranda Orthodox Tolkien timeline of the Second Age of Middle-earth and is part of Novus, Renaissance's Heretics and Hounds series that counters the blatant abysmal postmodern heresy of the Rings of Power show. The events that follow from Professor Tolkien's Arca Labaith and other tales from the Second Age of Middle-earth are from Orthodox sources found in The Fall of Numenor, published in 2022 by Professor J.R.R. R. Tolkien edited by Christopher J. R. Tolkien, and also Mr. Brian Silby. If you have yet to review our previous video concerning the first period of the Second Age, the Founding, years 1 through 599, we encourage thee to do so. The events of the Second Period of the Second Age laid the foundations for the cataclysmic impacts of what would later transpire and directly shape the entire course of the Second Age. As it relates to the Rings of Power show heresy, the events that Professor Tolkien wrote and those that were portrayed in the show are irreconcilable, and as a result, the show can never be fixed. Moreover, the rings of power utterly destroy the noble and absolute essential character arch of Galadriel. Now the continuation of the Veranda Orthodox Tolkien timeline of the Second Age of Middle-earth. The Second Period of the Second Age. The Rising. Year 600 through 1199. Year 600. The first ships of the Numenorians appear off the coasts of Middle-earth and are welcomed by High King Gil-galad, beginning the friendship and alliance of Numenor and the Eldar of Linden. Year 650 to 675, Galadriel becomes aware that Sauron had been left behind in Middle-earth. Galadriel perceived an evil controlling purpose abroad in the world, and it seemed to proceed from a source further to the east, beyond Eriador and the Misty Mountains. Year 700. Celeborn and Galadriel depart east from Lindon and establish the Noldoran realm of Eregion in proximity to the dwarves of Khazad Dun or Moria. From year 700 to 750, Galadriel was more far sighted in this than Celeborn. She perceived from the beginning that Middle earth could not be saved from the residue of evil that Morgoth had left behind him, save by a union of all the peoples who were in their way, and in their measure, opposed to him. She looked upon the dwarves also with the eye of a commander, seeing them the finest warriors to pit against the orcs. Galadriel was a Noldo, and like others of the Noldor, had been a pupil in Valinor of Aule and Yavanna, the giver of fruits, queen of the earth. Year 725, Aldarion, son of Tar Men Neldor, sails on his first journey from Numenor, across the sea, to Middle-earth, Lindon, and Western Air Region. During that time, he made the friendship with Círdan, the shipwright, and High King Gil-galad. Year 727, Aldarion returns from his first voyage. Year 730, Aldarion sails back to Lindon, Middle-earth, on his second voyage. Year 733, Aldarion returns to Numenor and remains for a year. Year 734, Aldarion begins his third voyage, as per the downfall of Numenor text, he was no longer content to sail to Mythland, that is the Grey Havens, but began to explore the coasts southward, past the mouths of Baranduin, also known as the Brandywine, and Guathlo, also called the Grey Flood, and later River of Shadow, Hernan Gren, or the River Eason, and he rounded the dark cape of Rasmorthil and beheld Arndrast, or Long Cape, which is the great bay of Belfalus, and the mountains of the country of Amroth, where the Nandor elves still dwell. Year 739, Aldarion returns to Numenor, bringing gifts from Gil-galad to his father, Tar Men Neldor. Year 740, Tari Lendil surrenders the scepter of Numenor to his son, Tar Men Neldor, fifth king of Numenor. Aldarion founds the Guild of Ventures. Year 740 to 800, the ships of the Numenorians become larger and of greater draft, carrying many men and great cargoes. Aldarion establishes Vinya Londe in Middle-earth, or the New Haven, which was later called Londaya, that is the Great Haven. Year 750, Ereg Eon, founded by the Noldor, and Celebrimbor, founds the Gwith Emir Dain, that is the people of the Jewel Smiths. The chief city of Air Region, Ostinithiel, is begun. The dwarvish craftsman Navi collaborates with Kelle Brimbor 
On the hidden doors of Moria, Celebrimbor drew the signs. Mithril is discovered in Moria, and its worth was ten times that of gold. Year 806. Aldarion set sail for Middle-earth upon his vessel, the Ai Yambar, which is sea-dwelling. He is abroad for seven years, then returns to Numenor with ore of silver and gold estimated in year 814. Approximately in year 820, Aldarion set sail aboard the great vessel Palaran, named the Far Wanderer for Vinya Londe, in Middle-earth with further designs and a fleet of seven ships. He returns in 825. Year 825. Aldarion, in open rebellion against his father's will, departs Numenor with three ships and the hardiest of the venturers back to Middle-earth. Year 835, the tenth year of departure of Aldarion, without any word of his whereabouts. Year 839, Aldarion returns after fourteen years since his departure, and his ships were battered and broken by the seas. He had sailed first to the haven of Vinyalonde, and thence made a great coastwise journey southwards far beyond any place reached by the ships of the Numenorians, but returning northwards, he had met contrary winds and great storms, and scarce escaping shipwreck in the Harad found Vinya Londe overthrown by great seas and plundered by hostile men. Year 847, the one hundredth year since Aldarion founded the Guild of Venturers. Year 847 to 862, Aldarion remains in Numenor, and led no expeditions abroad for fifteen years. During that time, the gallant Numenorean captains of the Guild of Venturers made fewer and more brief voyages, and went but seldom further than the land of Gil-galad. Year 862, Aldarion departs back to Middle-earth, and is aboard for seven years. He found the haven of Vinya Londe, now wholly ruined, and great seas had brought to nothing his labors to restore it. Men near the coasts were growing afraid of the Numenorians or were become openly hostile, and Aldarion heard rumors of some lord in Middle-earth who hated the men of the ships. His attempts to return home are halted by a great wind of the south, driving his ships north. He tarried a while at Mithlond, but when his ships stood out to sea once more, they were again swept away north, and driven to the wastes, perilous with ice, which is near the ice bay of Four Rock L, and they suffered cold. Year 869 Aldarion returns to Numenor. Year 870 the wedding of Aldarion and Erendis. Year 878. Aldarion looked forward to days when the people would need more room and greater wealth. He dreamed of the glory of Numenor and the power of its kings, and he sought for footholds whence they could step to wider dominion. He departed once more to Middle-earth upon the great ship named Hiril Londi, the Haven Finder. However, it was so large that Numenorians also called it the Wooden Whale. Year 882, Aldarion returns to Numenor and presents to King Tar Men Neldor a sealed letter that bore the device of white stars upon a blue rondure from King Gilgalad. A part of that letter Gilgalad wrote was, to quote, I write this for the eyes of the King of Numenor only. A new shadow arises in the east. It is no tyranny of evil men, as your son believes, but a servant of Morgoth is stirring, and evil things wake again. Each year it gains in strength, for most men are ripe to its purpose. Not far off is the day, I judge when it will become too great for the Eldar, unaided to withstand. Therefore, whenever I behold a tall ship of the kings of men, my heart is eased, and now I make bold to seek your help. If you have any strength of men to spare, lend it to me, I beg. Let not the ancient friendship of the Eldar and Duna Dine wane also. Behold, the darkness that is to come is filled with hatred for us, but it hates you no less. The great sea will not be too wide for its wings. If it is suffered to come to full growth, Manway keep you under the one, and send fair wind to your sails." End quote. Tarm and Neldor, upon much thought concerning the matters described in the letter of Gil-galad, declares his understanding of the matters as insufficient for a just decision of such high import and peril. He resolves to resign the scepter of the King of Numenor to his son, until the e rook ye rame spring prayer to Eru, the one, the following year. Year 883, Aldarion becomes Tar Aldarion, sixth king of Numenor. Year 883 or 884, Tar Aldarion is determined to return to Middle-earth and sails to the Grey Havens. Year 980 to 1000, 
the estimated period that Tarel Darian took his last voyage to Middle-earth. Of Tarel Darian, High King Gilgalad would describe in his letter to Aldarion's father Tarmen Neldor that Aldarion was too late or too early, too late for the power that hated Numenor had already waked, too early, for the time was not yet ripe for Numenor to show its power or to come back into the battle for the world. Year 1000. Sauron, alarmed by the growing power of the Numenorians, chooses Mordor as a land to make into a stronghold. He begins the building of Barad-dor upon the plateau of Gorgoroth, and dominated by the towering presence of Mount Doom or Oro Druin, the burning mountain, and the lands all about were scarred from its violent volcanic eruptions, which were not made by Sauron, but were a relic of the devastating works of Melkor in the Long First Age. Year 1075, Tar An Kalime, the most radiant, becomes the first ruling queen of Numenor. She was proud and willful. After Aldarion's death, she neglected all his policies and gave no further aid to Gilgalad. Exurge Tolkien, Secundum Tolkien, counter the rings of power, heresy eternum. This concept is copyrighted 2024 by Novus Renaissance, the home of the supernatural fantasy series Dor Var Dor and its lost legends and sagas of pre-flood Earth. Come and join us on an epic adventure and discover our books, music, merch, and the inspiration of your imagination.